Bruce Wardell, OverheadAthletics.com. Today we're going to go over some different tests for the UCL and medial elbow instability. So we have Chrissy here. She's actually a PTA student and a former college softball player. And we're going to start in a supine position where we can look at a few different things with their ulnar collateral ligament. So we know that the open pack position is 70 degrees of flexion, 10 degrees supination in that vicinity, depending on how the joint is formed. Some people it's a little bit more supination, a little bit less, but generally that's what we're looking at. So we'll put her in that position and I'm pinning her into supination with my forearm here against my hip. And then I'm gonna grab up under here and I can actually pull up and test. And you guys can see I'm putting a valgus stress on that elbow. And it is normal to have some discomfort with this. So I'll always compare side to side. And you might even have a little bit more discomfort on the throwing side, and that's still normal. What we're really feeling for is how much laxity the joint has and how much we can move the joint. So this is always the first test we do. Sometimes you'll see people do it just at their side sitting where they just push and go like this. This actually allows us to use gravity a little bit, pin it a little bit better and be a little more secure so we're a little bit more specific with our force. And then we can go to the other side and test the other side. So whenever we're doing one of these tests, we have to keep in mind that the joint doesn't gap as far here. So when you look at a cadaver or you look at an actual elbow, you can see put them in pronation and the joint's more congruent and flexion and you won't see as much gapping there at the uh, humeral ulnar joint. So I always test here, but then I'll also test with some valgus stress while I'll come this way and I'll put them here and I'll have them push into me. So push your hand this way. So I'll have them internally rotate at the shoulder and push, 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 making sure they're not pushing, relax, making sure they're not pushing across their chest this way. So they're actually activating into it. This will incorporate a little bit more of the forearm musculature. So when you're doing this, you have to keep in mind that those are going to actually compress the joint a little bit and take up some of that valgus stress. But it's a good sign if someone's doing that, that if that's pain free, that they may be able to throw pain free. So I'll put them here. I'll have them press. So press into me. Now say she doesn't have any discomfort with that. I'll do a little bit of distraction and have her do the same thing. Now, if there is discomfort with that, now I've identified that when I gap and distract the joint a little bit more, there's a little bit more discomfort. I can also do the same thing with compression. And then I go. So it doesn't take much compression to actually change how the joint moves. And it doesn't take much distraction to do that either. And then I'll do the same thing out here in the open pack position. So then I have her push to the sky. So if I do a little bit more time, sometimes there's a little more discomfort, especially in someone that's not that acute. So I'll just sit there and hold it just like this for a while. So then if I've gone through some of those things and there's no discomfort, no pain, but I know when they throw, they have a little bit of discomfort that may identify that there's something to the ballistic nature of the throw that's causing a little bit of that medial elbow pain. So I can have her lay somewhat on her side on a 45 degree angle, laying her arm, scoot down a little bit for me, laying her arm here, just nice and relaxed. And I don't do this hard, and that's one of the things you'll realize with all these tests is you don't want to press too hard, but you also don't want to go too soft where you're not going to actually gap the joint. And it doesn't take much when you have a full rupture of that ulnar collateral ligament to actually gap it. Some people's joints are more congruent. Sometimes throwers have been going a while. There's more dense connective tissue that's making the joint approximate a little bit more. So here I'll have her close to that open pack position. And then I can have her just relax, open up her hand a little bit. I'm actually going to apply a little bit of a ballistic, just a little like that. And then she might feel a little discomfort. I'm not going to drill it. I'm just going to give it a little bit of one of those. And sometimes that's enough to say, oh, I have some discomfort there. And we're making sure that her forearms relax, so we're not incorporating any of the forearm flexors, pronate or anything like that that's coming through there. So those are the main tests we use, and then I'll test them again in standing. So in standing, I'll do the same thing with compression, traction, um, valgus load in different positions. That's one of the reasons I wanted to touch on why it's so important having throwers elbow flexion and pronation because we put them closer to the point where the joint can actually gap. And the difference is pretty 
phenomenal. When you look at a joint when it's actually a full tear, you can gap the joint in the open pack position like crazy. Put them in flexion, pronation, and the gap in the joint when I actually apply a valgus and I can apply a greater force and it's still not the same. So the gapping here is going to be the most and that's why it's sometimes the most common test. You can also test them in a little bit more extension and maybe identify something else. But you want to incorporate all of these tests when you're looking at it. I see a lot of people testing, doing some sort of milk jug test or whatever they call it where they're actually in flexion and supination and they're doing this and you don't get the same gapping at that joint as you do in the open pack position. And sometimes the joint will gap more here versus here and these little subtle changes. That's why we also use a test where we actually drag it from flexion into extension because that's what happens during the throw. So it'll be a valgus extension test where I'll come here, I'll pin it and I'll pull up applying a constant valgus stress, pulling them into extension. And a lot of people have a little bit more discomfort right at the end range, especially because that joint is getting a little bit more congruent and it's compressing a little bit based on the arthrokinematics of the elbow and the trochlea. So if I, if I illuminate a place where she feels some discomfort, I'm going to go and test that place directly. Again, do you feel it there or is it only once I go into extension? So these are some things that we'll use to help test the elbow. There's some other things we'll do, but these are the basic ones where we put them in the open pack, just a standard uh, valgus stress test. We put them here. We do a little bit of supination, compression, distraction, and then we do a sliding test or a extension valgus load. So those are the main ones we use, and those are ones you can use with your baseball players or softball players.